title of this particular panel here, The Changing Face of Chinese Consumer, uh, we're going to try to focus on the development of the China consumer and its consumer markets. Um, specifically, uh, we're going to try to uh, spend a few minutes and, and, and see if we can not uh, delve a little bit into some of the characteristics and complexities around the changing face of the Chinese consumer, which I think all of us know well is changing at a very rapid rate. And importantly, to try to gain some insights uh, uh, from companies' standpoints who are looking to enter into the China market on what are some of the winning strategies uh, and techniques that are being deployed uh, to create you know, value and to be uh, successful. Uh, needless to say, these are very, very complicated uh, uh, topics. Uh, and thankfully, uh, I am uh, blessed to have uh, an extraordinary group of panelists uh, to, uh, to lend insight and aid to these questions here. Immediately to my left, uh, Victor Yuan uh, comes from, who arrived here from, from Beijing. Victor is the chairman and president of Horizon Research, which is the leading consultancy group in China focusing on uh, uh, the, consumer, uh, the consumer markets. He's also vice president of the China Marketing Research Association. Victor has over 20 years of experience in the marketing research field. He's, he's had over 400 publications on this topic, and obviously that's quite relevant for, for, for today's, this morning's topics. He's advised almost all the leading companies, both domestic as well as uh, foreign companies, who have, who have tried to enter China and have entered China over the past number of years. He's a graduate of the Harvard John F. Kennedy School of Government and earned his PhD at uh, the Peking University. To, um, to Victor's uh, immediate left, uh, is Bill Emilio, who comes uh, to us by way of Singapore and many other cities in between, but his home is, is in Singapore. Bill, since late 2005, um, is, uh, was named president and CEO of, the, of, um, of Lenovo Group, uh, which is the number one uh, PC company in China, which is important, and the number three, the third largest PC maker uh, worldwide. Um, two years ago, uh, I think most of us know that Lenovo acquired the IBM PC group in a widely publicized transaction, and we'll talk to, to Bill about uh, uh, some of the rationale insights and what he's doing with that uh, going forward. Uh, prior to Lenovo, Bill had uh, a numerous senior executive uh, operating roles at Dell, NCR, Honeywell, IBM. Um, and like I said, he lives in Singapore, but for those who know him well, they know that he lives actually on an airplane and traveling between his four or five different offices. And as he said to me this morning, he is perpetually jet lagged. So the, uh, uh, that's the state of, I guess, of the, of the world affairs. Uh, to, to, uh, uh, to Bill's immediate left is uh, Fred Longhammer. Um, Fred has spent over 30 years in various senior uh, executive capacities at the SD Lauder Company and uh, over one third of his professional career in, uh, in the Asia theater. Uh, specifically. Today he is the chairman of its global, global affairs at SD Lauder and for five years from 1999 to 2004 was its chief executive officer. Um, as I said earlier, he has spent significant time traveling and living in Asia uh, with both SD Lauder and before that with uh, Inchcape, which is a major British uh, trading company. Um, the, uh, today he serves on uh, numerous boards in addition to his, to his role at uh, Estee Lauder, uh, including, among others, the Walt Disney Company, AIG, AIG the Shinsei Bank, among others. And again, all of those uh, companies that he serves on boards are relevant for, for today. And last, but certainly not least, uh, Senator Bill Bradley at the far left uh, of the table. Uh, Senator Bradley currently is the managing director at Allen & Company, an investment bank here in New York. But most of you probably know him as a result of his uh, 18 years of public service as a U.S. Senator from the state of New Jersey, where he served from 1979 to 1997, and of course uh, his presidential uh, uh, run in the year 2000. Uh, prior to his role in government, uh, Senator Bradley played uh, 10 years for a team called the New York Knicks, here, right here, and was soon thereafter elected to the Basketball Hall of Fame. He's a three-time All-American at Princeton University, captain of the 1964 gold medal uh, basketball team. And in addition to his role at Allen & Company, he has a regular program on Sirius Radio that you should all listen to called American Voices. Uh, and equally importantly, he has published his fifth book called The New American Story that I hold up here for a little uh, uh, that all of you should read. I actually went and ran out and grabbed it when I heard that it was uh, out, and it's a, it's a terrific read. Um, in addition to his roles at uh, Allen & Company, he serves on numerous public and private boards, uh, including Starbucks, and, and we're going to 
uh, uh, press on Senator Bradley for some insights on Starbucks, given their recent uh, push into, uh, into China. Um, as I said earlier, you know, we're going to try to reserve the, the last few minutes of this panel uh, for audience Q&A, so please, by all means, put your questions down. But given the complexity and the enormity of this, uh, this dialogue, we're going to spend just a minute or so uh, to try to frame the questions, as it were, uh, and give you a, just a, we have a few slides here that we just want to make sure that everyone in the audience here is grounded. So a couple things. Number one, I think we all know that China is undergoing a fundamental shift uh, from a production economy to a consumption economy, thus the topic of the China uh, and, and consumers of today. No question that as a result of that, the consumer economy is growing rapidly. The retail economy has been growing at a much faster rate than the G7, the most developed G7 countries. China, on the upper left corner there, is a small red dot, so that the, the size of that dot relative to, say, the U.S. gives you some rough proportion of the size of the, of the, uh, uh, of the markets. But look at its growth rates. It will, is anticipated by the year 2020, which is not that far from now, to become the second largest consumer economy in the world, surpassing Japan and second only to the United States. And indeed, as no surprise, most segments uh, uh, in China, uh, in the consumer segments, are growing at over 6% per annum. That 6% is notionally known as uh, uh, sectors that are growing at a high rate versus a moderate rate. So look at all those uh, colors in there that are growing at that rate. From a demographic standpoint, there's a number of things going on that I think are, are noteworthy. Uh, first and foremost, China is becoming a much more urban population. I think we know that. This chart sort of illustrates the, the move. And as a result of its industrialization, no surprise, higher income um, is growing um, and growing at a much faster rate. Education, China is becoming the largest education uh, system in the, in the world. And spending power uh, as a result of this in, newfound wealth um, is uh, spurning a great deal of tourism and, and, and the hospitality field. And, and that's travel not just inside China from the Chinese consumers, but obviously international as well. And what effect does that have in terms of how they think about consumerism? And lastly, you know, while we think about the Chinese as, as kind of dominated by the Han uh, group, all of which is true, it does make up 90 percent, uh, notwithstanding that, there are numerous uh, subgroups uh, uh, inside China that we have to pay particular attention to. So some of the questions for today uh, that we're going to uh, 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 try to touch upon anyway is to try to understand some of the complexities um, uh, of the Chinese uh, consumer. What's going on? What insight can we gain? And then lastly, how can foreign brands compete when we enter in China? And I'll leave up this sort of question here. This is the old joke that the last foreigner to make money in China was Marco Polo, and, and hopefully we'll gain some insights at the end of this as to whether that's, that's true or not. Um, so, the, the, um, uh, so the format here is I'm going to start off with a number of questions to the panelists, but I, hopefully this will be reasonably uh, uh, free form. And again, uh, we'll save uh, the last portion of this uh, panel for some, uh, some Q&A. So Victor, I'm going to start off with you, uh, if I could. Um, you know, your firm has been on the ground in China advising both foreign and domestic uh, companies for many, many, many years. And if you can kind of just give, give the audience and share some insights in, uh, as to what, what are some of the key advice you're giving your clients on the comp kind of the changing complexity of the Chinese consumer. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think a lot of things we can uh, talk if we mention about Chinese consumers. <laughs> But uh, there are something are very important would be uh, the key development. The one thing is about the rise of the youth power, which means uh, the young generation in China. Uh, if you look at the Mike's uh, graph, you can see uh, you know, uh, the retail expenditure of Chinese consumers is really growing very quickly. But actually, if you look at another figure, which is about uh, ratio of a confidence of a consumption, which is always be keep a flat at a low level, which means if you connect the interview and you know, with uh, interviewees, adults, Chinese, ask them if this is a good time to purchase products and items. They will say, no, this is not. But actually, they spend a lot to purchase. So that's very interesting because psychologically, they think this is not good timing. But uh, actually, they are doing a lot of that kind of uh, shopping and purchasing. So what is the reason? Uh, so another uh, uh, figure which is not present here is about uh, the structure of uh, total population. Actually, now people talk a lot about China and uh, 